Hi, it's uh, Jason again at the Centre for Computing History and we're at the Acorn World Exhibition that we've got put on uh, today, this weekend. Um, it's also on tomorrow, but you're probably watching this sometime in the future, so it's all irrelevant anyway. Um, I'm here with Paul Emerson um, and he has brought along for the exhibition um, a brilliant display of some machines. It's Acorn, so obviously this is Acorn related, um, but what is very, very specific about these is how they were used. So, Paul, hand over to you. What have we got here? What we have actually is a collection of machines starting pretty much back from when Acorn first produced machines all the way through uh, to the very end and in fact beyond. Um, they used actually initially BBC Micros, which I don't have here, but Arch Acorn Archimedes starting from the very first A310. Um, they used them for putting, creating anything from the little clocks in morning breakfast time TV. Right. Um, all the way through to things that appeared in the background on screens and also full full screen graphic overlays um, and then as, as sort of time progressed uh, they, they did other things like the morning um, children's TV so mm -hmm. when when kids would phone in and sort of say uh, play the little on screen games yeah 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 yeah, yeah you phone up he said left left That's left it. left yeah. right jumps right. like or eat you know and all yep. this sort of stuff and um, they so all of those were actually done using the Acorn Archimedes computers Awesome. So, so the BBC started using BBC machines to do this, yes. but then as it progressed, the graphics were needed to be a bit better. They moved on to uh, RISC PCs and Archimedes and things like that. Yeah, so um, the BBC used a, a combination of the, actually the computer's own graphics, which was, is quite amazing, really. Mm -hmm. um, but also uh, the company Millipede produced a number of graphics cards um, and Genlock cards. So, right. for instance, the Prisma 3, mm -hmm. um, which We've got an original down down at the very bottom mm -hmm. and up at the top um they rehouse the internals into their own kind of kit to fit in with the broadcast Put it in the rack and everything else yeah yeah um and they would sort of control those using either bbc masters or the acorn archimedes all the way up to uh risk pcs well. um and they did all, all all sort of uh, anything where there was a high dependency on the graphics it had to be live there were no Kind of, you couldn't have anything sort of go wrong. So, yeah. like for instance, in um, the Children in Need or Red Nose Day, yeah. the totalizers, you know, they had to put in numbers on the fly. Yeah, this was a live broadcast. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So they had somebody <laughs> in the gallery that yeah. could actually control the system, doing, uh, uh, probably to, at the same time as a presenter is saying stuff or whichever yes. way around. Right, okay. Yeah. So, so this, one, this one's a Children in Need one, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so th this very much is a, an example, um, I think, of proof of concept codes. They, right. the, the BBC would have uh, this, uh, this would all be created at the BBC in, in a special uh, projects department right. where the, they would have a team of programmers. The, the, um, the program creators would turn around and say, we need this graphic, we need that you know, clock, we need X, Y and Z. And they'd, they'd throw these things together based on the brief of the, the television programme that was being made. Um, and this so, is one of the examples. <laughs> so it's, it's got to be said that, I mean, so this is not a graphics package that's being used to create the graphics on the screen, like, like Photoshop or what you might think of today. This is no. code that has been written to do that, right? Very much so, yeah. So, so a programme has sat down, has been given a brief by some artist or whatever, yes. and they've made that happen. Yeah. Sometimes they would work with graphic designers just to kind of get the, um, the graphics right. So, yeah. for instance, in the, in the games and what have you. But everything would be coded from scratch. There would be no off-the-shelf program or no um, major, major bit of software that they would use for it. That's quite incredible. And uh, actually, when you move sort of... So, with, with the Prisma 3, they used that. And the, the Archimedes own graphics for things like the morning game show uh, uh, sort of phoning things. But then it went... Oh, all the way up to sort of really high-end programming, very um, sort of high-importance programming, such yeah. as the National Lottery. Yeah, um, absolutely. So, so the lottery one's an interesting one, because obviously, I mean, that to me, I've just seen it a million times yeah. um, and never, ever won anything. Um, <laughs> so I hate it. But, um, but so what you've got there is it, so this is, a, this is the output that would go out on the live signal. The rest of it is kind of gen-locked onto the cameraman. So the cameraman yeah. is going to be focused on the presenter that's, that's presenting at that time and the, the machine, whatever. Yes. But this part then sits over that. Um, so you've got yeah. full alpha. Um, sort of overlay there. Absolutely. Which is yeah. impressive for a machine of that time. The, the alpha, the uh, overlay, is that being done by the Prisma or is that done from the um, risk PC itself? On this one, this is running an Apex card, so right. it's kind of like the thing that, that, that followed on okay. uh, from, from the Prisma and what have you. Um, 
but the, the, the boards could actually do the, the gen locking, but actually the way the BBC used it is they took the video feed out, um, synced up, of course, to their, the rest of the cameras and what yeah. have you, and then they would do that in the gallery. Okay, right. Uh, and they would, they would key out the rest using that, that okay. information. But the boards were capable of doing that. Right. Um, so we have, So this is the front end. This is what we were watching on telly. Yes. But behind the scenes, in the gallery, somebody had access to this. Yes. Which you could probably have <laughs> some amazing fun with. Um, but they would have got sacked. <laughs> so, um, so what we've got here, we're on the, the second ball. So the first ball's been drawn, yep. um, 42. Um, how are we going to get the next uh, ball to be drawn? Well, so uh, we've got this lineup of numbers here. And what would happen is um, in the gallery, you'd have someone who's operating this. They would be the one with the mouse. Uh -huh. And uh, so the, the number 25 would, would come down yep. over the um, talkback systems. They would hear... Right, so the next number is number 25. Uh -huh. The voiceover artist would do it, and there it appears, and it moves on. Yeah. So you progressively kind of work your way through, and um, all of this is very simple to control. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's designed so that, that people that are involved in TV production can uh, drive the graphics. You yeah. don't have to be, you're not a, a programmer specialist or, or a specialist. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. once, once the, the ball has been drawn then it is you can't do it again can you so that's so there's right, little yeah. safeguards in there to stop things like that happening so once we get to the end there so what's, what's the bonus ball today right the bonus ball is uh well today's the 13th so it's number 13. bonus ball of 13. lucky for some <laughs> yeah never me um right so then we we've got that part of it going so what's this the reordering recap at the bottom reordering oh yeah recap. because at the end they then reordered them all so right now we're in sequential nice yeah and then um, so the, the voiceover would then read it out and, yeah. and, and they would listen for it. So say, you know, number four, 25, <laughs> 36, and, and so on. Awesome. Um, and the and bonus ball is? Number 13. 13. <laughs> and the next stage would Okay, so be you click next and then all the, the screen came apart there. So now we've got That's it. ready for the next draw. And they make the line. So now we're in Which, Lotto Extra. Lotto Extra. <laughs> so all the graphics would change. It's weird knowing the program and how it, how it went out. And it's just, yeah, strange to see the behind the scenes part of it. And it's, it's laid out so that it would follow the narrative of the program. Yeah. So it's, it's just very, very straightforward. Yeah. Um, and if, if they, for whatever reason, let's say uh, the number's 25 and I accidentally click 26, uh, we're in trouble. This is going out live. Right. So they would clear it. Are you sure you want to reset the draw? Yes, it would go away, and then you would reanimate, and they would read the numbers out again, just to make sure that you put the correct number in. Um, did, did that ever happen? We probably did. I've I, never said that. I, I, I don't know if it did. I think <laughs> I, there may have been once, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly certain it probably didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, it's all there, ready to do that. So, and it's got to be. Yeah. It's got to be. Again, it's another live broadcast that that has to be right. Um, and it's interesting to see how that that works as well. So you've got this again. You've got a back end now. Yep. And it's been completely designed for that one specific job. Um, so somebody's created that interface, made it yep. very simple, foolproof, um, and then uh, just allow somebody to click on and make the stuff happen on the screen. That's it. It's uh, even down to what the prize draw fund is there. Right. So you just it, drop yeah. it in and animate. That's so cool. Yeah. And, and the thing is, these interfaces, um, I mean, the reason they use the Acorn machines, apart from the fact that they could deliver graphics reliably, and it was, it was very, very uh, tight, which is exactly what you need in a mm. broadcast environment, um, they were reliable. You didn't have the operating system trying to access the hard drives. Yeah. You know, it's all in yeah. ROM. It just talks straight to it. Yep. You know, no need for anything super clever. It worked spot on. Because, I mean, there were video animation systems out there uh, at that time, but they were high-end, big-money stuff. Uh, humongous yeah. sums of money. Yeah. yeah, this is what they were doing. Yeah. Which, that's, that's a big testament to Acorn and the, and the things like the wrist PC and the Archimedes and stuff. It really is. That's really cool. So that's the, the wrist PC. So, th I mean, th this was, what other stuff was this used on? Was it just the lottery? Or? No, there's loads and loads of programs. So, um, the, I mean, the other well-known one, Eurovision Song Contest. <laughs> uh, question of Nilport. sport. Yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, question of sport, um, uh, big break, Noel's house party. <laughs> so all those things, and, and actually one of the things I, I, I hadn't mentioned yet, which was the, not only would they control the graphics, but some of these programs would also be responsible for delivering the sound, um, mainly via uh, MIDI controller synthesizers. Right. right, okay. So yeah, so it just sends out the MIDI key press, whatever, and it just hits the sound or whatever. Yeah. Okay, 
All right. Did, I, I, we were talking earlier, you mentioned it was Zach IS-1000 that was on the end of it. That's it. So, yeah. you can have, so that, that's a sampler, um, rack mount sampler like this, and you could put sounds on floppy disks, um, and that would respond. So it, didn't, it was a sampler that could play music, but it didn't have any keys itself, so it needed to be linked to a synthesizer or a controller like this. Um, so this would then send the signal to say, um, press that you know, middle C or something, that would be a ta-da or whatever, yep. and away it goes. So, Awesome. Okay. They'd also use MIDI in the other direction. So um, for controlling the graphics automatically, sometimes you wouldn't have someone sitting in the in the center um, in the gallery. Sorry, pressing the button. It would be a case that um, if you've got a trigger in a um, game show, for instance, right. it would have to trigger the uh, graphics automatically. So they'd use uh, MIDI right. set up for that as so well. So any buttons they had on the on the quiz shows and stuff, that was actually a MIDI signal coming back. Yeah, um, in, in the many cases, stuff. yeah. Clever stuff. Yeah, you can't, I mean, you actually, I was, I was about to say, you, you, you'd think it was just a wipe, but actually you don't think about it at all, do you? No. It's just there. Just it's happens. Just, yeah, yeah, you just don't even think about it, but all this kind of technology behind the scenes. It's, I mean, before I go on to the, to the next bit, we've got one up there, Time Up. Um, yes. So that was a, um, a Saturday morning kids show, wasn't it? That's it, um, yeah. What, what, what was well, it? Well, um, this is uh, Nobble the Wobble. Right. Uh, which would be... Um, it's hard to call it time, I idiot. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> that's that, that's uh, just basically... So you'd I, rec I recognise all the graphics and stuff. But what, what was the programme? It was Saturday... Uh, it was Live and Kicking. Live and Kicking. Um, but right. they used to run them in Going Live and that sort of stuff, right. different, these sorts of things. Yeah. Um, or Maggot Moments. That's uh, well known by, you know, I suppose people that are of a certain age. <laughs> 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 yeah. We'll okay. See. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you you just ring in and say go left and right. So uh, the operator again in the gallery or or in the studio somewhere would have this this screen here, and you can see it's very very straightforward. Um, so you've got left right uh, suck, which is suck up the little gooey things, whatever they are, um, lift up and down and, mm -hmm. and what have you. So we can reset it. That will um, reset the game. And then when it's time to start, you've got left and right. Left, 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 right, right. And then, oh, you press space <sighs> to suck. So you say suck and you go like that. Oh, I'm not doing very well at this. There we go. Got Nobody ever two. did. No. Because the trouble <laughs> is, I mean, the, the kid, and I, I, I got angry as the other kid watching it <laughs> because they'd say left, 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 or whatever. And it'd be left and then a right and a left. And you what are you doing? Yeah, you said left, why yeah, are you right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, obviously, it's, you've just got somebody <laughs> listening on the phone to what they're saying and pressing the keys. Yeah. And half the time getting it wrong. Um, so, so that's awesome. So, Saturday morning yeah. kids' shows done again on, on wrist pieces, which is, yeah. yeah, you just didn't think about it. It's cool. So, okay, so we've got all these machines here um, and they've done umpteen different um, BBC TV programmes that we yeah. know and love. How have you come to got these things? Well, um, obviously they, after a period of time they were decommissioned, which yeah. incidentally was a long time after Acorn packed it in. Right. Um, I mean, with the lottery here, that's 2005. I, I'm not sure exactly when they, they packed up with that, but they were still so, using Acorn technology so for a So that says a lot, again, for the hardware because they didn't think they needed the, the company support for it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, the graphics company Millipede provided a lot of support for their graphics systems and made sure that things were running. But in terms of the hardware, this is the other thing. With, with these big, cumbersome, sort of dedicated graphics systems, mm. not only were they immensely expensive, but they're also um, quite delicate, really. You can't sort of mishandle them. Right. Whereas these, these were jobbed all over the place. Right. You know, and it would be a case of pull that card out, pull in and put in another card and you know, you need this MIDI card for that and that serial port for this program and all that sort of stuff. Um, but anyway, yeah, the, the, the BBC um, uh, and the company uh, that they use basically obviously progressed on, particularly with things like high definition and what have you, which yeah. required more. Um, so after they'd, they'd been in storage for a while, the company um, that formerly was the BBC Special Projects Department that eventually became round one, mm -hmm. uh, decided it was time to kind of uh, dispose of it. Right. And um, all the software and hardware was going to be scrapped off. No. Uh, yeah, and the, no. and the machines were pulled apart. Uh, uh -huh. I mean, mostly they were in pieces anyway, right. um, because the, they would build them up for specific purposes. Yeah. Yeah. But the, um, the, the so they, they, they sort of thought, well, actually, why don't we put you know, a couple of items on eBay, right. um, just uh, for, for nostalgia. So for instance, the A310 that we've got around the corner has got uh, BBC engraved in it with a soldering iron. <laughs> uh, Does the job. The engineers. It yeah. works, it yeah, works. Exactly. You're not gonna 
<laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> it's just a workhorse at the end of the day. So, so they, they, exactly. they, they yeah. come up on eBay? Well, they, they did. And I only found um, uh, sort of this particular computer out there, an A310. And I thought, well, I'll, I'll, I'll buy that. I want a 310. <laughs> All right, OK. Um, and I ordered it. It came through. And the postal service had uh, done us a disservice and smashed the front off. Right, smart. Yeah, wasn't best pleased. Yeah. Um, but I phoned up Carl, who was the chap at round one, and just sort of said, hey, you know, this is this has gone a bit uh, uh, not so great. And yeah. he was really, really good about it and said, I'll send you out another machine. Right. No problem. Um, we got chatting about about the machines and uh, you know from mine I'm sort of sitting there imagining this pile of these machines and I'm just thinking <laughs> I want them um, and yeah so I just thought after um, going out to meet him uh, we talked about uh, what what he'd done at the BBC and got to see some really interesting stuff yeah. um, and then basically discussed about the idea of preserving yeah. um, the kit fantastic uh, the software was all going to be still scrapped off but actually after a, a year and a half and just sort of talking it through it was um we worked out that actually uh, as you know subject to, to to obvious things making sure that it's it's not generally released yeah, and that sort of stuff right. okay. we could preserve it fantastic so that's, this, that's that the story is, that is awesome so from that that's, it's kind of a good job it was broken the post really wasn't it otherwise you just i mean so you got yeah. the 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 uh, 3010 as just as, as a machine that you wanted to Having the collection or something, it, it wasn't. You didn't know that it had all this history with it as well. Or no, did it? I had. To, well, I, I, as a kid, I saw that they had written this Maggot Moments thing right. on on a on an arc in in a show I was watching, right. and I actually wrote to the BBC as a kid saying, "Hey, I've got the same computer. Can I have a copy?" <laughs> didn't get a reply. No, really? <laughs> Don't understand why. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and then you know, twenty odd years later, uh, I now. I finally have it, but yeah, I saw it and I just wanted it. Yeah, you have it, but you have the hardware as well and, and yes. just the works. That is that is incredibly cool. So yeah, this is a real piece of history really. And it's something that a lot of people are going to recognise, all these, these things, the lottery there and, and whatever else, yeah. kids' game shows. Um, that's fantastic. So well done for getting a hold of it and, and, and also getting it all working again. I mean, I'm kind of assuming that wasn't that easy. No, no, it's... Um because of the way they used hardware and they changed it between programs and also you had different programmers and um, all of the software was on, on disks which are starting to degrade, yeah, you've got bit right. rot all over the place, hard drives in fact which had seized. Right. So I've had to go through and um, try and recover data, initially taking the stuff off of the drives uh, that, that work straight off, uh, being very careful that you know when they come up copy it off yeah as soon as you can yeah even though i wanted to click through the drives yeah. and see what's there it's like no copy it first then look through it wise yep nice um and uh, they, i mean luckily some of the drives which had seized have managed to get working again um sort of release the heads and then get the data off very quickly Fantastic. which has been good still a couple of things that i need to to kind of get through right. all the floppy disk drive floppy disks have been done right um but the goal is to get a number of programs and then, you know, with everyone, with everyone's permission, basically um, something, you know, an exhibit potentially to, to show how, not only how were they, they were used and, and have a hands-on opportunity to kind of play with this stuff, mm. but also um, see the actual programs where they were used. Yeah, so. yeah. It's, a, it's an interesting display and just... In an area, like I say, that you just don't even think about it. You're watching the show and enjoying it. You don't yeah. think about all this malarkey going on in the background. No. So, no. <laughs> fantastic stuff. Thank you very much indeed. Really appreciate bringing, uh, bringing along to the uh, Acorn World Exhibition. And, um, yeah, good luck getting the, the rest of it going and, uh, and the rest of it preserved. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.